G'day, welcome back to my channel. Now, some time back, I picked up this little Matchbox Bristol bow fighter. Now, I've built a few of these Matchbox kits. Um, I'll show you a few pics here. I uh, built a little Hawk of Fury, which was the very first Matchbox kit I'd ever built, and that was only last year. And it was a joy. Everything fitted together well. The molding was lovely. I, I, I'm just so amazed at such an old kit. Even though the detail was fairly basic, it was, you know, very simple kit, it was a lot of fun to build. And that's my main criteria with a hobby. If I'm not enjoying it, don't do it. So these little kits sometimes are just a blast to put together just to keep your mojo going, especially to de-stress, especially if you've got a great big build with, you know, lots of photo etch and complicated parts. Anyway, I um, built Fury, that was fun. Haven't got around to rigging it. I um, built a little Warus, well little, it's quite a big kit actually, 172nd. Warus was great fun too, a little more fiddly, a bit tricky on that one, trying to get all the angles right with the motor that's twisted to the wing and uh, it, was a, it was a little more frustrating, but again, I got a result, really happy, and I ended up doing the Australian version. Then I spied this at my hobby club. We have sort of like a little swap meet there where we get rid of kids we don't want and we pick up other ones and nobody charges an arm and a leg. I got this for like half a shekel, which is $5 Australian. Not much at all. And I'll, this will be fun. Put it away. I'll grab it one day. Well, that day came and um, I decided I need a little mojo boost. And I was going to do something simple. <laughs> well, that's how it started. Here's the whole story. The kit plastic was surprisingly good. It was very clean and crisp. And it looked like it was going to be a fairly easy cleanup and assembly. The instructions, well, they're, you know, from that period, very basic. Only seven, well, six steps, really. Seventh was over the page. And there, that's the seventh step there was just paint it. <laughs> the paint guy's pretty hopeless. The decals, I didn't use them. They weren't that good. Now, the first thing I want to do is I didn't like the big, long, pointy nose. I wanted that smoother, rounder nose, as you see with the diagram with the one above. So I hacked off the piece that I'd need to retain to make the shorter nose. And then measuring back and being very careful, I hacked off the extension part of the nose. And it's squeaky bum stuff, this. I would measured everything like 10 times to see if I got it right. Anyhow, glued that remaining nose piece back on, and that gave me close to the profile I wanted. But of course, this needed a lot of filling, a lot of sanding, a lot of mucking around. So I started with super glue, filled the worst of it with that, then added some Mr. Surfacer, and then keep working my way down and sanding and sanding until I got the profile I wanted. That was looking good. Now the next job was to address the um, tail. Now the tail had a fin in um, the model that Matchbox um, sort of presented. But at that stage, I believed I needed to cut that fin out. Later on, I found the model I was doing could have had the fin. They did them with either or, but anyhow, I didn't know that. So hacking into the fin, that was a bit of, um, you know, a bit of a drama. And I ended up with this great big hole. So then I had to get out the, um, the clamps, <laughs> clamp and glue it all up and try and get that basically sort of squeezing back into the shape that it should be. And I really began to wonder why I did this. But it all sanded up, it all came out well, and I was pretty happy with the result. Now, the kit started to look almost finished. And I thought, gee, this looks so lovely. I, I might just keep going on and going on as I'm going on and going on here. What are you talking about, Harry Houdini? Well, I just followed the kit's instructions here. I put in the um, ailerons. And um, they fitted nicely. They are even poseable. And there's a little airspeed indicator, although I think I broke that off three times. I don't know why I did that. Usually I won't put on anything that is breakable until much later on. But anyhow, it all started to come together and started to look fairly good. And I was getting the shape I wanted. But those wings, mm, there wasn't a lot of detail in those wings. The panel lines were pretty bloody comical, to say the least. But more about that later. Still, the kit was an easy build. It was fun to put together, and I was pretty happy with the result that I was getting. Now, the next thing to think of was the motors and the tower planes. Now, shortly, I'll show you what happened, because those tower plane pieces, they didn't really fit, and they weren't the right size. Now, at this point, I started to get some primer on it to see how, uh, how it was all coming together, and I just used a bit of Tamiya rattle can. 
and I noticed there were discrepancies and there were bumps and there were problems. So I filled and I sanded. I also started doing some rescribing on the body and some rescribing on the underneath to add a few more panel lines, to add a few more interest to this. Now I had those diagrams my friend the duck had given me, and that gave me basically the indication of where the panel lines should go on the actual model I was doing. So I got out my trusty little corn on the cob, <laughs> which I used to um, cut panel lines, and I haven't found anything better. It's so easy. And using tape as a guide, I score very lightly, and then slowly go deeper and deeper until I got the panel line that I wanted. The panel lines on the kit were pretty exaggerated to start with, so the ones I added were probably a bit heavier than they needed to be, but that was to match what was going on. That started to look really good, and I was very, very happy with the result I was getting. So all I needed was a coat of primer, and then we could just move on with the rest of the build. Now, both Rider 1 DIY to control, mate, uh, we're experiencing turbulence here and having a cutout in our uh, starboard engine. It's um, it's looking really difficult. Oh, God, it's, 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 it's really hard. The wind's buffeting. I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, no, what's going to happen? Megsy, both have cut out. Oh, we're gone. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yes, um, I was having so much fun with this build, I think I started going insane. Anyhow, I moved on and I needed to um, paint up those little pilots. So um, I, I researched the colours and uh, basically made of one of them blue, one of them brown, which is just sort of my choice really, from what I could gather of the various kind of RAF uniforms. And um, they fitted nicely, they looked good, pretty happy with that. I was pretty confident the, um, the interior would look good with those pilots, but we needed more. So I started drilling out the machine gun holes because they needed to be more pronounced and, and they looked a bit better. I drilled out tiny little breather holes in the, um, the manifolds there for the motors. That looked a lot better. And then also I added a little bit of scratch plastic and I started to do lots of changes to improve this model, but it just wasn't enough. So far, so good. And I'd only planned to do maybe a little bit of scratch work on it and pretty well keep it to an out-of-box build. But then, unfortunately, I went to the hobby store and this happened. Yes, I snaffled the Airfix version, which is a lovely kit. And everyone was saying to me, why are you spending all this time on the Matchbox kit? You could have just bought the Airfix. Well, I was having fun, enjoying myself. And really, you know, that was the thing. I, I was having a ball modifying and adjusting the Matchbox kit. But anyhow, this Airfix kit contains a lot of things you can use in the Matchbox kit because the Airfix kit contains two different versions. You know, sort of like a Dragon kit where there's, you know, there's A, B, C and D all in the kit and you're building C, but if you're smart, you can see the parts and you know that they're there and you could use them for something else or even not even build the one that's indicated on the kit box. The Airfix kit has a whole lot of options, different tower planes, um, different wheel, um, wheel housings, and there's lots of little different bits. They really, uh, Airfix has gone to a lot of trouble to produce a kit that gives you the ability to do it a couple of different ways. What I'm trying to say here, I'm sort of waffling on and know, is there's bits in the Airfix box you can steal. So I decided in this, um, in this Airfix kit that when I built it, I'd just build this one here. So that meant I had rockets, I had a different tail plane, I had a whole lot of things that were not going to be used when I do my build of the TFX. Whoa! That meant I could use them and basically put them on my Matchbox kit, which was coming back to being more like a Mark VI almost, <laughs> closely. It's a bit of a dinosaur really, Bristol. But anyhow, you get the idea. I found that although I had bought this kit, I could steal and bash stuff into the matchbox. Okay, let's see what happened. So I gathered together all the pieces that would improve the kit. A better tailplane, better rockets, better um, rear wheel. And I started to work on these things. First, I had to cut out a hole in the rear of the fuselage, bottom there, to put a wheel in, because basically there was nothing, absolutely nothing on the matchbox kit. It was solid there. And I really wanted the hole. I'd had a look at what the Airfix kit looked like, its parts. So I cut out the hole and I put in the spare Airfix part because this would basically be a wheels up. Even though the wheel pops out, wheels up. Now, I also wanted to make the um, interior. So I found some photos. Don't have rights to these photos. It's just photos I found. And I found that 
the old interior from my spare P40 I had, even though that was 148, those parts would fit and they were pretty close to approximating the same kind of interior for the Bowfighter. So there it is with a bit of a mock-up. So I reshaped and I cut and I scraped and I chiseled and I hammered and I generally rooted around. Now the tailplane, as you can see, there's the um, matchbook ones beside it. There's the Airfix ones, correct size, in it. They required a lot of filler. I also cut out and placed in the clear landing lights here because the matchbook kit is just solid plastic. So all of these changes made a big difference to this model. The um, tailplane became more accurate. The uh, landing lights looked much better. Now, one thing I had to make was a um, the yoke, a little control stick there with uh, handles on. And I made that out of bending some wire and placing on a bit of sprue. And I scratch built that myself. I was pretty happy with the result, so how tight it was. Now, with all that done, it was time to prime the model and start getting some serious work of painting. So um, did that, but then again, panel lines were still looking a bit crappy and wasn't very happy. So I sanded back again and filled again and primed and sanded until I got the look I wanted. And then I thought, yes, those panel lines are working. Now I had to mix up the color for the underside of the um, aircraft. I didn't quite have the exact color that I wanted. So I mixed that up, gave me exactly the shade I needed and um, pretty happy with that using Ataka paints, went on first coat. Now this is the design I wanted to use, this Aircraft H, which is an Australian one. It had this lovely wiggly line there on the rear fuselage. Here's some photos of the actual aircraft. I don't have the rights to these photos. I'm just using them to illustrate the plane that I wanted to duplicate. So there it is. It's crashed at this point. Thought of doing the crash version, but decided not to. Instead, I just wanted to make it look like that. Now I did find some decals and I did find um, a kit that I, um, I used to basically create my version. The H though, the H proved a little bit looser, so I ended up having to make one by creating my own stencil. Now um, that seemed like a good idea, and the other thing I had to do was paint all the camouflage. Now, I worked all that out from various um, drawings and, and photos I had, and I marked all those up on pencil, and I created my paper mask. Now if you ever seen my channel before, I like to use paper masks to do the um, camouflage. The wiggly line at the bottom though, I did that with um, tape that had been cut out as a positive and a negative so that I could spray that very wobbly, wiggly line. So I managed to do that. I got the bottom sprayed in that sky color. I got the top sprayed in a gray, which the Steinerez gray was very close to the um, medium C gray that you needed. I started to put on my masks and they float just above the model. Plenty of videos on that. Go back and have a look at the Spitfire. Go back and have a look at the P40. I use exactly the same technique I've used every time and it always works for me. So on went my floating masks, which give me a nice sharp edge with a tiny bit of a feather. So it's not too soft, it's not too sharp. On went my uh, dark sea grey, which I mixed up and made myself. Later on I actually bought the colour and found I'd actually mixed it so damn close. And there you are. The various masks and the um, templates all worked well to give me what I wanted in camouflage. Now, at this point, there were a few little bits of overspray because I hadn't quite put my tape down correctly. So I needed to touch up a few things. And the same, I needed to also do a little bit of touch up with the top camo. That's okay. Having those masks, they can always be put back on and you can also have the reverse ones because you've cut them out of paper. You've got both the positive and the negative. So I could use that tidy everything up. Now, the interior, I hadn't got around to painting that. So I painted up all those little parts that I'd stolen and the FX wheel and the motors, started to build that little interior and um, it was getting pretty busy in there, but I was so pleased with the result that I, that I got. Um, that all had to be clamped and glued in and I had to wait and see if that actually sort of worked. But it all came together and a test dry fit with all the clear glass showed, yep, I'm on the right track. That was all coming along really nicely. I used those aftermarket decals and um, started to turn this into an Australian bow fighter. The, um, the little landing light there, that had to be masked and again, a bit more filler, a bit of fiddling on that. The rockets I'd stolen from the um, Matchbox kit, oh sorry, stolen from the Airfix kit to use on the Matchbox kit, even I'm getting confused here. Anyhow, that all started to look fairly good and I'd masked up the um, landing light so I could respray it after doing a bit more of a fill. It was all coming together well. I was really happy with the result I was getting. And, you know, 
The decals went on with basically no problem at all. I was so pleased. It was really coming along nicely. The, um, the colour scheme, which is basically the Australian one, I loved it. I loved those colours. I loved the way they went together. And there, it, there it is. It's looking pretty bloody schmick. And I'd used my stencil to put my H on and I was feeling pretty happy at this point. There wasn't really much more to do. Ah, there is a invasion stripe there that's in the airfield skip. Well, I didn't want to put that on. My Australian one didn't have that. One thing, though, that became apparent after I painted is there wasn't enough in the way of detail the underside. So I ended up rescoring and rescribing and then touching up and putting a whole lot of more panel lines on there. That gave me just what I wanted and the kit was coming together brilliantly. Now you may have noticed the H is missing. Yes, that H that I went to all the trouble to mask and paint on there. Well, in my fixing up of um, panel lines and redoing things and touching up, I actually managed to paint over and wreck my H and I was very disappointed. But anyhow, I, I tidied all that up and I used decals that were in that um, those aftermarket decal set that I had and I used the LYOM. I'm not sure if it had the wiggly line, but mine's got it. Anyhow, at this point, I decided I needed to start doing some post shading. So I got out my Life Color liquid pigments and these are great, great products. And for that, I managed to dirty this bow fighter up a lot because they really saw a lot of service, especially the, um, the Australian ones. The um, motors and the front of the leading edge of the wings got heavily chipped. So I went berserk there, more chips than you normally would put on a thing. But look, that's how they were. They really got beaten up. They got a really hard life, especially out here in the Pacific arena. And the um, rockets finally went on and painted them all up. They were stolen from the FX kit. They looked the treat. So it was pretty well all coming together and I was ready to finish up this build. So, what started out as going to be a simple, out of the box, fun build, as my other uh, Matchbox kits had been, turned into a rather larger exercise. I mean, the tail planes from Airfix, the, um, what else? I stole rockets off Airfix. Uh, the rear wheel is Airfix. The interior uh, cabin there is stolen off a P40. <laughs> There's all kinds of things going on in this. And I mean, I rescribed all the panel lines and, you know, scratched, built, scrubbed, cleaned. Oh, the little lens there was also stolen off, um, off the Airfix kit. There was a spare one. Look, um, it's turned into a dinosaur. Yes, it is a Bowfightosaurus. <laughs> But I had a ball. I mean, whoops, 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 don't break it. I had a ball. Uh, again, like with egg kits, I was trying out new techniques and trying to see what I could do. And I didn't care if I wrecked this. And then, as I always said, once the expectation level and the stress level is down, you surprise yourself with the kind of results you can get because there's no pressure. You don't care if you break it. And then you relax, you enjoy it, and invariably you teach yourself new techniques and you have a ball, just as I did with this lovely Matchbox kit. And I'll tell you what, grab yourself one of these old Matchbox um, bow fighters. See what you can do with it. Even if you don't do what I did, just scratch a few panel lines on the wings and just do some little stuff. Have some fun. How can you go wrong? It's a cheap old kit. And I'll tell you what, you should have as much fun as I did. All right. Well, as always, we'll end this video with a little montage. A little, um, you know, display of the model looking very pretty. <laughs> I still haven't put the rigging on for the antenna wire. Oh, I'll get round to that. I haven't put it into competition yet. I'll put that on. But that's about it. There you go. What do you think of that? That's the story of my um, Frankenstein bowfighter. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Houdini.